Hi, in two previous videos, which I'll link in at the end of this video and down below, we looked at the uh, Uber autonomous self-driving car uh, fatality that happened, uh, when was it? Back in uh, March. And if you're not uh, familiar with the incident, I'll briefly recap. Um, in the US, an Uber self-driving car was uh, driving along in fully autonomous mode. It's actually a Volvo XC90, as you can uh, see here. And it's fully equipped with uh, Uber's suite. They developed their own suite of autonomous uh, self-driving systems. So a LiDAR, a radar, and uh, like you know, half a dozen cameras on the thing, 360 degrees. It's uh, supposed to detect oncoming uh, you know, people, other cars, obstacles and potential collisions and things like that and apply the brakes and avoid and, you know, do all that uh, sort of jazz that you'd expect a self-driving car to do. Anyway, so the car was driving along at night. It didn't have any uh, paying passages in there and it was in fully autonomous mode, basically going down a straight stretch of uh, motorway when it uh, collided with a pedestrian who was walking their bicycle across the road. And it was dark at the time. There's a lot of speculation about what the actual cameras actually seen but pretty much everyone was in agreement um, in the tech field that the uh, lidar and radar system should have picked up uh, this bicycle because the bicycle was like side on coming across the car I won't replay the accident uh, video that's in the previous videos um, but really this was all speculation did it actually detect them why didn't it break uh, and the person wasn't actually they were supposed to be in control of the car but it was in fully autonomous uh, mode and the driver um, was actually looking down at the time as it turns out at the uh, autonomous car driving systems and wasn't paying attention to the road and they reacted at the last second didn't have time to stop unfortunately the pedestrian was uh, struck and killed and we've been waiting for the report to come out well good news is that it's just come out just today, here it is, the National uh, Transport and Safety Bureau a board um, have just released a pre preliminary report, but it's basically, you know, these are our conclusions pending any other further um, information to come along. And it's pretty damning. So let's take a look at it. And I'll, of course, link it in down below so you can read it for yourself. This is just the summary. We'll open the full uh, report in a minute, which doesn't have a whole lot more. But I'll uh, look at the important stuff here. Basically, they talk about uh, the bicycle did not have side reflectors. It was dark at the time. They were crossing in an incorrect spot and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, really, the pedestrian shouldn't have been there. But that's uh, kind of beside the point. The whole point of this video and all the uh, hype surrounding this accident is that this autonomous system should have detected the bicycle. It's not who's at fault, but they should have actually detected the uh, bicycle and the pedestrian crossing across in practically ideal uh, circumstances, apart from uh, being at night. But with, uh, as I said, LiDAR and radar should have detected that and should have applied braking. But we'll get into that. And here's the first damning part, uh, which we'll read in more detail in the report. The vehicle was factory equipped with several advanced uh, driver assistant functions by the original manufacturer, Volvo, including a collision avoidance function with automatic emergency braking, as well as functions for detecting driver alertness and road sign information. Uh, these Volvo functions were actually disabled, deliberately disabled, when the... Uh, car when the uber car is operating in autonomous computer control mode so uber deliberately disabled uh these systems that potentially could have actually detected this and stopped if you were driving the original uh factory fitted volvo xc90 the report states data obtained from the self-driving system shows the system first registered radar and LIDAR observations of the pedestrian about six seconds before impact. So this is what pretty much everyone uh, in the industry uh, expected it would do. And the radar and LIDAR systems looks like they work just fine uh, when the vehicle was traveling at 43 miles per hour. As the vehicle and pedestrian paths converged, the self-driving software classified the pedestrian as an unknown object as a vehicle and then it reclassified it as a bicycle with varying expectations of future travel path. But it did actually identify it as a bicycle. So the system worked. Um, whether or not uh, that 
uh, to classify it as a bicycle, I would think that they would have had to include some uh, potential camera data in there as well. And everyone was saying that the camera, it was too dark for the camera to see anything. Well, that's not the case. The uh, dash cam footage that we saw it was underexposed for that particular camera. The camera used on the uh, well, the camera-based detection systems uh, might have seen something very different. And as I've shown in a previous video, I've played footage of people who've actually gone back there and some older footage of people who've shot it with dash cams at the exact same location at night and it's, you know, things are plenty visible. So that original uh, dash cam footage from the accident really wasn't very indicative of what the cameras would have seen. But here is the most damning part of this. At 1.3 seconds before impact, the self-driving system determined that emergency braking was needed to mitigate a collision, which it knew it was a bicycle. So it, therefore it knew that there was a human on that bicycle. According to Uber, emergency braking maneuvers are not enabled while the vehicle is under computer control to reduce the potential for erratic vehicle behavior. And there you go, Uber have basically admitted that when it's in autonomous driving mode, they disable emergency braking. What? And this is the big trade-off with autonomous car systems and the things that they're, uh, I think all of them are struggling to get right, all makers of autonomous car systems, in that um, you can't just be braking and, and swerving for every little thing that you detect. There's got to be some sort of, you know, threshold. Is it real? You've got to, as you saw, it detected it like six seconds before. It classified as a car, then it reclassified, you know, and it's got to project the path that it's going on. And really, for a smooth ride, you can't have it just you know stopping and starting and you know slowing down speeding up and jerking around all over the place so you know that's one of the things but they disabled emergency braking in autonomous car mode wow the vehicle operator is relied on to intervene and take actions so is the driver uh, culpable in this case? Is Uber culpable for uh, disabling the emergency braking system in autonomous car mode? I thought that'd be part and parcel of an autonomous car was with it had an emergency braking system enabled. Unbelievable. <laughs> the system and the system is not designed to alert the operator. So it detected this bicycle it classified it as a bicycle by definition a human's on a bicycle it knows it's probably going to collide with it and it doesn't not only does it not apply the emergency brakes it doesn't even alert the operator unbelievable in the report the ntsb said the self-driving system data showed the vehicle operator engaged the steering wheel less than a second before the impact so they did actually maybe that was the point when you saw in the video where they looked up and went like that, it seems like that was a second before the accident, but they didn't break for another second after the impact. So it took two seconds for the human mind to register that and actually apply the brakes. And well, that's probably understandable. The vehicle operator said in an NTSB interview that she had been monitoring the self-driving interface and that while her personal and business phones were in the vehicle, neither of those were in use until after the crash. So when we saw just before the incident happened in the video that the driver was looking down like this, we assumed it was a phone, but no, she was actually monitoring the self-driving systems which were down here. So it would have helped if they had a heads up display, maybe. And all aspects of the self-driving system were operating normally. There were no faults or diagnostic messages. Well, I'd hope there'd be a diagnostic message saying there was an impact and that uh, we detected a bicycle. <laughs> anyway, here is um, the reconstructed data that they've got. And here's the car. Here's the object detected um, as a bicycle. This was uh, 1.3 seconds uh, before impact. It classified it as a bicycle and it probably knew um, the path because it, it the system actually determined that emergency braking was required But they disabled that so the car couldn't emergency brake and it didn't alert the operator So this is 25 meters out. This is meters not feet. So 25 meters out it classified and detected that bicycle and that's pretty much what 
you know, what you'd expect of one of these autonomous self-driving systems. So the, so the system worked, but it seems like the implementation of that um, is the issue here. And here's the full preliminary report uh, PDF, which I'll link in down below, but it doesn't have a huge amount more. It's only uh, four pages uh, long. And here's the uh, actual uh, graphic of where it actually happened. It's pretty much almost exactly where I uh, uh, actually predicted based on the um, image data and, and Google Maps and things like that. I think I got that uh, pretty close. And here's the um, car after the accident. You can see that there's not much damage uh, there at all, which indicates that it was going uh, relatively slowly when it um, impacted. And once again, here's the uh, full comment on, their, on them disabling the, the uh, Volvo functions. They've got an emergency braking system known as City Safety, which um, most likely could have detected and prevented this accident on its own in the factory fitted Volvo. But of course, they deliberately disabled that, presumably so it didn't interfere with the Uber uh, systems when it's in computer control. And uh, according to Uber, the developmental self-driving system relies on an attentive operator to intervene if the system fails. In addition, the operator is responsible for diagnostic uh, monitoring diagnostic messages that appear on the interface in the center stack of the vehicle dash and uh, tagging events of interest for subsequent review. So that's probably what the driver was doing. The driver was like doing what they were instructed to do by the uh, sounds of things, but because the monitor's down here and they didn't have any sort of like heads up display, their eyes were off the road. And when you take your eyes off the road and you've got no emergency braking system enabled, no wonder this happened. And as it turns out, they were actually driving a known uh, test route here. So they weren't, it wasn't designed to be picking up uh, paying passages. They were uh, testing the system, uh, basically. So you'd expect the driver on a test route um, to be monitoring the system. And just there's the data again. It first detected something at uh, six seconds before impact when it was traveling at 43 uh, miles per hour and 1.3 seconds before impact, it determined that an emergency braking maneuver was required. Um, it refers to dec oh, in Uber's self-driving system, an emergency braking maneuver refers to a deceleration greater than 6.5 meters per second squared for those playing along at home. And there's that uh, thing again, it detected them 25 meters out. That's when it determined uh, that it, emergency braking was actually required. And if you're wondering, did the cameras on the uh, Uber car, not that dash cam that we've uh, seen, did it actually uh, pick up the bicycle? And the answer is yes, it did. Shows the forward facing video, show the pedestrian coming into view and proceeding into the path of the vehicle. So it saw it the bicycle coming across. So there was more than enough light to actually do that. So as I said, that probably used some of that video as part of the detection algorithm to determine that it was a bicycle and not a car. It originally thought it was a car, then it re reclassified it probably based on that uh, camera footage. So could the car have stopped in time uh, if it actually did have that emergency braking uh, system uh, enabled in autonomous driving mode at 25 meters, uh, 1.3 seconds before the impact? Well, the answer is uh, no, it couldn't have, but it would have slowed down very significantly, which uh, may have, you know, lessened, well, would have lessened the impact on the uh, person. And um, I've had David uh, crunch the numbers on this one. We actually got the data for the, got the the, some braking data for the Volvo XC90 uh, used here. And uh, we've done some uh, calculations here. And it, once again, these are gonna be, these are gonna be rough calculations, it's gonna be large error, fairly large error bars on this because it's gonna be, um, you know, the weight of the car because we don't know the weight of the autonomous driving systems, what they add and things like that. We don't know the tire types, the tire condition, the tire pressures, you know, all that sort of stuff. But we're fairly confident that this is, you know, a reasonable figure. Basically, the final answer is it was originally traveling at 43 uh, miles an hour. And um, after, Assuming 1.2 seconds, I've allowed 100 milliseconds for the detection of the start of uh, braking. Um, it would have been traveling 22.7 uh, miles per hour, roughly. So basically, the speed was halved from 43 to 22 or thereabouts. Um, so that would have been a dramatically less impact if the emergency braking system had done its business and uh, slammed the brakes on. So there you have it. Um, it's not looking very pretty for uh, Uber, is it? Anyway, um, let us know what you think down below in the comments and also on the EEV blog forum linked in at the end of this video. As I said, I'll link in the two previous videos. 
oh, somewhere up there. Catch you next time.